This will make it easier to carry. The boy. It must be. But I need to be sure. Perhaps the names are on the back. Lady Margaret. She looks happy. I can't imagine her smiling like that these days. <sighs> Grandfather Edward. Just as he looked last night. The boy. How did he provoke Edward into throwing him down the stairs? What's this? Looks like it's drawn in... blood? Regardless of what I told Miss Cranon, these visions are like nothing I've ever experienced before, and they're getting worse. Uh, Lady Margaret? Yes, David. I saw an old photograph of a boy in the other room. Something tells me she wouldn't be happy if she knew I had it in my pocket. Ah, that was taken in 1894. Young Johnny, your father. You can remember the exact year. It's a funny thing when you reach my age. You can remember dates from decades ago. But not what you had for breakfast. Maybe others can't. Um, who, may I ask, were the others in the picture? That would be your Aunt Clara and your late great-grandmother, the last true Countess of Scarhandu House. And my dear Edward, of course. I uh, noticed my father had a scar on his face. How did that happen? <sighs> Falling from a tree, perhaps? I can't recall. But your father was a clumsy child. Can't recall. But you remember the date the photograph was taken. Hmm. I shall take my leave, Lady Margaret. Yes.
David, apologies for not being here to greet you. As the telephone in the castle is not working due to the recent storm, I have had to journey to the village to communicate with my office. Upon my return, I shall show you to the chapel where you can pay your respects to your father. Yours, Andrew Harrison. Or maybe I'll just head to the chapel myself, just as soon as the weather clears. It's working. Has it been repaired? Or did Andrew lie to me?
Finally, some fresh air. Master David, you could tell it was me. Your footsteps. I ken the walk of everyone here. Well, that's, that's rather incredible. Aye, that it is, laddie. That it is. I hear better than most. See more than most and all. Father had a similar toolbox. Back when he still fixed things around the house. Locked with a padlock. Andrew will have a key, but I'm not keen on waiting for his return. I've seen this before, in the painting. This is the grave I, I saw in that waking dream or whatever it was. The grave my father buried something in as a boy. Who's buried here? If I could just... Ah, these vines are too thick. Nobody left to mourn the dead, or care for their graves, it seems. Rory's tools. A hammer, a tenon saw, a bolt cutter. All a bit rusty, but in good order. Uh, the graveyard. Is it a family plot? Aye. No matter how high and mighty, all the Gordons end up there. <sighs> a cheery thought. It's a shame we do not have the means to properly care for the graves. Why bother? His bones and food for worms. Um... May I borrow your bolt cutter? Maybe. If I can what you need it for. The graves. I would like to tidy them up. That way I can pay my respects properly. Is that a fact? Why is that then? They are my family. They deserve to be remembered. Ah, fair enough, laddie. Just grab it yourself, will ye? You?
letter. Cecilia Shaw Nee Gordon. Aunt Cecilia. Now, let's see if there's something really buried in here. Another piece of the castle model. Another part of the model, and it's stained with what seems to be old blood. Why did father bury this when he was a child? Father, I hope you found your peace. Were you sick, like they say you were? Or the victim of this, this curse? This curse of the Gordons? <sighs> Whatever it is, I think you may have passed it on to me. Being the chronicle of the family Gordon, as laid down by Sir Drummond Gordon, the year of our Lord, 1413. Local legend speaks of this particular glen as being inhabited from time immemorial. Enigmatic, elaborately carved pectish stones stand as timeless evidence of this. As for the locals, they appear prideful of the counsel they delight in giving to visitors. Traveler, beware. The Celtic peoples arrived in this place like a great beast, bringing with them the bloodlines that would eventually spawn the Gordon clan. Using their superior numbers, knowledge, and machines of war, they swiftly conquered the primeval Picts. With them, they brought to their religion and druid clerics. The magics these wise men used did shape forever the lands, even until this present day. It is said, that the sempiternal burden our family carries rose at that time. It is well recorded how the Empire of Rome did fail to tame the wayward Scots, that they did even raise a barrier to protect their mighty empire. What is seldom told is the truth behind their defeat. Our ancestors drew upon ancient powers to aid their victory. Powers not easily fathomed by the fragile human mind. This aid did come at the greatest of costs. A debt as yet unsettled. A price we will continue to pay until the last Gordon passes to dust. For the centuries, we Gordons made the land our own. Others did bow to us as we kept the secrets of Skahandu. The secrets of the Black Mirror. Even as tragedy and madness did fester in our foundations, we held fast and steered the land through vile English attack and worse. In time, the Gordons and the land became one. Some pages have been ripped out. The only thing left seems to be some kind of family oath. In blood we are bound to the land we protect, to the truths we alone may conceal. I shall forfeit my life. Lest my clan should suffer, I shall forfeit my spirit to hold the darkness at bay. In blood we are bound till the day of the reckoning.
Is this what madness feels like? It can't be real. This looks like the bottom of a lake. What are you trying to show me? down. There's a fresh wound across her stomach. The figure up there must be... Edward. Are you all right? Uh, did you... did you see her? She... Uh, drowned. Calm down, you are in shock. What were you doing clambering about in here? <laughs> oh, if I told you, 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 you'd think me mad. Odd. That is just what your father said to me. You knew my father? How? I treated your father at the asylum. I'm Dr. Leah Faber. The asylum? Let's get you back to the castle and make sure you're okay. What did you come here for? I'm not sure your father's story is finished yet, and there are some things I still need to make my peace with. What's this about an asylum? As I said, your father was admitted. Why? Who did that to him? I did. 
but unfortunately he managed to escape. What? Hold on a minute. How dare you come in here and... Told you? Your father was a madman. A complete and utter madman. Don't mind me. Please continue. Well, what right did you have to lock my father up in a, in a madhouse? I was his doctor. I understand you are in shock, but you have no right to speak to me in such a way. I was trying to help him. He's dead. Capital job. Now, hold on just a minute. Jesus! Oh, no! No! <laughs> Eddie, it'll be all right. Pull yourself together. I suggest nobody else goes down there. We should keep the room intact until the police can get here. I shall alert them first thing in the morning. What an unfortunate accident. An accident? You think so? Just after the madman's son turned up at our door? And yet you were the one standing over her body with blood on your hands. How dare you? I was too late. I was trying to help her. She... She... <laughs> there, there, my sweet boy. Let's get you to bed. Angus, would you? Of course, ma'am. I think we will all benefit from a good night's sleep. I know you may have no reason to, but I need you to trust me. I'm the only one on your side when it comes to your father's death. Lady Margaret certainly isn't. But if I told you what I saw in the chapel, you'd have me in a padded cell just like my father. So, what was my father like when you locked him up? I didn't just lock him up, I tried to help him. Your father was heavily drugged when he was brought to me. It was to prevent any further violent outbursts. Or so Lady Margaret had said, but something felt wrong, even then. Why did you come here? To make sure my father was successfully in the ground? With all due respect, Mr. Gordon, I will not allow you to speak to me or about my work in such a tone. I tried everything I could to aid your father. He was convinced he was carrying some ancient curse, that he was being haunted by evil. I wish I had reached him had been able to help him. So do I. You weren't the only one who couldn't reach him. You're a persistent one, aren't you? Maybe if I threw you a bone, you'd get off my back. He used to babble about a dark force threatening him and our family. Was that why he moved you to India? 
to remove himself from this place. I believe so. And yet here you are, in the very place he sought to protect you from. Who knows? Maybe there is an ancient evil in this place. An evil that drags us back no matter how far away we get. Even from the other side of the world. Father was obsessed with the history of the family for as long as I can remember. Did your father actually believe his family was out to get him? Who knows? Though I think what really scared him was beyond the physical. And what do you think? Was your father right? Are there things beyond the physical? He was a disturbed man. He saw things that weren't there. Things like a drowning woman floating in thin air. If you really want to help me, then let us find out what the maid knew. She was hiding something, but was too scared of Angus and Margaret to tell me. You think whatever she wanted to confide might be connected to her death? Maybe. Whatever I saw in the chapel, it has to be real. It has to be. A woman must have drowned herself in the lock. Because if it's all in my mind, like father, like son... We need to examine the maid's body in the cellar. To find out who killed her? To be sure she was murdered before we start pointing fingers. Angus will have the key. Unless we can find another way in. What is it? Got you. <laughs> I'll get you back. <laughs> you Stop monkeying around. Come with me. I'll come inside in a bit. Don't go. Can I just have a few? It's not a request, girl. Don't worry. I'll be fine. What's happening to me? David? Is everything all right? We should make haste. house is particularly chatty, not even when I have an actual question for them.
I think I might have an idea how to get into the cellar, but I'm not sure you'll like it. If it involves this filthy dumbwaiter, don't even think about it. I can't fit in there and I see no other way into the cellar. Hmm. You're asking me to put a lot of trust in you, given the circumstances. You can trust me. And I will do my very best to learn to trust you. Mm. All right, then. Clothes can be washed. Lovely. Pull me back up! I need something to open the doors from the inside once I'm down there. This should do it. We need to examine to find out who to be sure she was mur going down. Good luck. See you in a minute. Dr. Farber. Is everything all right? Leah! Oh, if anything's happened to her. You needn't worry about me. I've been to stranger places than this castle. Follow me. Her neck's been broken, and with some considerable force, it seems. Her necklace looks like gold, albeit a plain design. And it's missing any form of pendant. Still, well beyond a maid's salary. It... Oh, where's that sudden draft Your stag from? is here, my little door. Little Doe. Not exactly the usual way to address the staff. Her clothes. He ripped a seam open. The missing pendant. He threw it into the Bloodfield Basin. We're all here, sir. All down in the dark. We're... Something's coming. The attic, sir. She's in the attic! What just happened? You look like you were in some kind of trance. Perhaps the lack of sleep is affecting me. Or the visions that you'd think me insane if I described them to you. You need to learn to trust me. I am on your side, remember? So you say. But I remember you locked my father up too. A tiger can't change its stripes.
Ugh, that's horrible. You're not the one with your hand in it. French. I don't speak French. I do. It says for Clara, forever yours. Who's Clara? <laughs> I don't know. Yet another relative, perhaps? We should ask someone who's been around here for longer. How did you know it was there? The pendant, I mean. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. A hunch. Eddie gave this to her. We should ask him to his face just what his relationship was with her. This isn't another ghost story, is it? Look, you wouldn't understand. I can't... What I do understand is that we cannot accuse a man of murder without proof. They seem to be a house full of carnivores. The scene really did rip when she tried to get away from him.
It's labeled Mallory. As in Eddie Mallory. Recognize that? The necklace. Is that... A young Eddie and his mother Clara. I regret to inform you that your husband, Corporal Victor Mallory, number 874511, was killed in action with the enemy on the day of the 14th of September in Ypres. Your husband was involved in an advance against enemy lines. While he and his fellow soldiers fell, the action was successful, and you can take comfort in knowing his sacrifice saved many lives. It was not possible to get his remains away, and he was buried in a soldier's grave. Please accept the condolences of all the company. Yours. Captain Arthur Jones, 4th Army. Thank you for your last letter. My heart soars with every word of yours I read. I touch the ink and imagine your fingers are just inches from mine. That we can almost touch. That I can almost feel the warmth of your skin once more. Young Edward grows more like his father each day. You'd be amazed how he shares your looks. I long for the day that this terrible war is ended and you return home to us so we can be a family once more. I shall write to you again soon. Know that until then you are always in our hearts, your loving wife, Clara. The date. She was writing this when the death notice arrived. Oh, the poor woman. <laughs>